Greetings, this is August 15th and we are looking at the Tremont Creek Fire Zone. Logan Lake is at the bottom of the screen. Tunqua is close to the top of the screen. We are looking at M3 hotspots on the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. This takes the data from three different satellites and combines it to almost triangulate exactly where the uh, hotspot position is. Keep in mind these can be obscured by smoke and haze and they can still be off position uh, depending on the orbits of those satellites and how the data is perceived. Logan Lake is close to the bottom right of the screen and these hotspots have reached to Highway 97D on about the center of the screen and over on the right hand side we can see a couple of hotspots there coming almost to the highway. If we zoom out and look at that southeastern flank, we can see a hot spot between Weiss Lake and Pasca Lake. Then the fire line recedes around Chartran Creek and comes back towards the west side of Dominic Lake. If we move a bit further north, uh, Tunkwa Lake is up in the top left hand side of the screen. Uh, the fire line moves from Dominic Lake up towards Ferguson Creek and Duran Lake on the west side, and then up towards Duffy Lake on the west side. Moving a bit north again, uh, we can see it's going up the west side of Tunqua Lake Road. There is a large cluster southwest of Fair Lake, and there's another hotspot that's uh, to the east of Mount Savannah along Durand Creek. Zooming out, we can see that cluster southwest of Fair Lake uh, Savannah Lake and on the right hand side Monroe and Tobiano. Wind is coming from the southwest at 24 kilometers an hour on the last check about uh, 154 and if we look at the forecast right about now those uh, high winds should be uh, coming in from the southwest those winds are predicted to last until approximately 2 a.m. There could be some precipitation at 8 p.m. Uh, then tomorrow, Monday, those winds are expected to shift and turn from the west and uh, eventually end up coming from the north again. Monday evening, there may be some precipitation and hopefully that adds up. This forecast is saying about 10 millimeters over a span of about 8 hours and starting around 5 p.m. However, on Tuesday, those winds are expected to turn and come from the north again. Uh, breezes around 25 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 57 kilometers an hour. And that may alter a bit uh, from the northwest to the northeast, depending on the terrain and your location. We are now moving northeast to the Sparks Lake Fire Complex. Bonaparte Lake is at the top of the screen. Barrier is on the right hand side of the screen. There was a large push eastwards of the fire zone into Bonaparte Park. We're zooming in now. We can see a lot of patterned M3 hotspots intermingled with random hotspots. Uh, a lot of lakes in the area. This is quite rugged country. The fire perimeter has expanded past Bonaparte River. Uh, it's right at Canine Lake and Skull Creek. And if we zoom out, we're looking at approximately 15 kilometers uh, overland uh, to the North Thompson River. Barrier is on the east side of the Thompson River in the lower right hand portion of the screen. We're zooming out now, taking a look at the Sparks Lake Fire Complex. We're looking at the M3 hotspots from yesterday, and we're going to roll into today. Now we see that orange hotspot indication. That is the newer data. Let's zoom in and take a look at that again. Here we are looking at yesterday's data, and please pay attention to Young Lake and the infrared clusters there at the top of the screen. This is information from yesterday and now today. Young Lake actually receded in intensity. Most of that fire activity has gone through Bonaparte Park. There could be many factors for this. One of them could be the terrain, depending on how sheltered a location is or whether or not the valleys and the mountains in the area channeled the wind through them. Uh, we'll need a ground report. That's crucial if you're anywhere near these fire zones, go to the BC Wildfire link in the description below and find out what the situation is and what they're reporting for this fire. 
Winds right now are coming from the southwest. They're reaching 18 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 50 kilometers an hour. And by 5 p.m., those gusts could exceed 50 and go up to 55 kilometers an hour. Precipitation is expected tonight and the winds are going to slowly turn and start coming from the northwest again. On Tuesday, those gusts coming from the north could reach 50 kilometers an hour. We're rolling into a screen of the area just to the north of Logan Lake. This is MODIS data that I saw last night come in and uh, I'd like to go into this a little bit further but I'm going to release this video because of the timely nature and uh, there is VIRS information coming in uh, about 3.30 and I'd like to include that in the next video. So again, um, there has been a lot of activity over the last uh, 12 hours. I grabbed a few screenshots because the winds were coming from the south at 9 kilometers an hour and all the weather model sets stacked up against each other. They displayed that same uh, wind coming from the south. But here is the fire behavior. We're seeing it from yesterday and now today. So there was expansion to the east at the 12.30 a.m. update on the MODIS system. My suspicion is that these western gusts that were coming in yesterday fanned out over the terrain and pushed a lot of debris and incendiary material forward, creating spot fires. We may be seeing control strategies here, so uh, we'll have to review what the VWRS data shows. And because I'm in the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System right now, let's just take a look at what's happened since the 11th on the Tremont Creek Fire. Uh, here is the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, and today. And now we're zooming out slightly from the fire zone and turning on the season to date hotspot so we can see the extent of this fire. And there we go, that's a considerable amount of territory. And if you, of course, are anywhere near this, you want to get updated ground reports from BC Wildfire. It is still active and currently out of control. If I could leave you with one positive, I didn't see similar dramatic fire behavior in many of the other fire zones. Uh, this is a screen from the White Rock Lake area. Um, I didn't see any extension in such a manner around these fire zones. We're moving up to a screen from the Flat Lake fire zone on NASA's firm system. And here, a uh, lot of activity on that northern flank, but I didn't see the same sort of uh, push eastward that we saw on the Bonaparte or the Logan Lake fires. This is a screenshot from a good friend of mine up in the Caribou. We are zooming into the area around the Flat Lake fire zone. We can see that tall smoke plume rising in the distance. That was earlier and now clouds have begun to roll in. Some haze has filled up the area. By this morning uh, there was a lot of cloud cover on the infrared and uh, as we progress throughout the day it's filled up even more. One of our viewers was asking about getting the satellite uh, layers on this system. If you go to the menu on the right hand side, uh, scroll down and you will see backgrounds and then you can enable the background of your choice, VIRS or MODIS. Uh, they also have the streets and uh, the generic blue marble. However, those Satellite updates are infrequent and if you can't see the one for today, it isn't available yet and you may have to select yesterday's date in order to see the most recent data. Uh, the MODIS Terra seems to update first and uh, that's what we have just been viewing. The VIRS data is probably just updated now so I'm going to go and check that uh, for any changes or expansion in some of these fire zones. Thank you very much for watching and uh, it is very active out there. Please be safe, please be careful and keep your nose to the breeze.